Hi, and welcome to Qt Medical Software Development Course. My name is Lukas Kosinski. I am the founder of Cyph Studio, software engineering company focused on Qt framework. And 80% of our projects are medical devices. Therefore, we specialize in this area. We got a lot of expertise about medical software, industry-specific things like Diacom, PAX, HL7, regulatory. We are also ISO 13485 certified company. And you might know me from the previous series of QtQML programming tutorials. Uh, it is available on YouTube and Qt Academy. And that series was welcomed really nicely. And there were a lot of comments to keep doing things. So yeah, we decided to prepare next course. I thought that it would be the best, of course, for me, um, to prepare a course which would be about using Qt specifically for medical sector, as there is no single other course on this topic, and I know what I'm saying. Generally speaking, coding aspect uh, doesn't differ that much from other industries, so this course is mostly about things um, typical for healthcare software, for medical devices. You will also learn a lot of things that are valid for medical devices development, despite the fact whether you use Qt or not. So, yeah, this video is an introduction to the course. What can you expect? In the next episodes, we will talk about the reasons of choosing Qt for medical software development. So we will talk about things that matter for this industry, like advantages of Qt, but also disadvantages. Then we will uh, talk about choosing a hardware target for medical device, later also about choosing an operating system, then I will explain how to approach medical software architecture and which characteristics of Qt uh, help in this aspect. Yeah, next I will tell you about connectivity and networking modules available in Qt and which of them are mostly used in the medical projects in particular cases. We will also talk about implementing Diacom viewers in Qt apps. And finally, there will be an episode about usability, accessibility, UX, UI, about design best practices. We also plan to extend this course a little bit next year. Um, I plan a few more episodes, but for now, that's it. This course is designed for CTOs, for funders, for team leaders. Uh, but anyway, I think that if you are not into this sector, you will also enjoy watching it and get a lot of nice insights. I really hope that you will like it. Let me know in the comments what do you think and have fun.